Activated clotting time or known as ACT is a test that is used primarily to monitor high doses of unfractionated standard heparin therapy. Heparin is a drug that inhibits blood clotting and is usually given through a vein by injection or continuous infusion and not subcutaneously. The relationship between administration through the vein and activated clotting time is that ACT is testing uh, an acute changes in heparin, heparin administration. In moderate doses, heparin is used to help prevent and treat inappropriate blood clot formation, thrombosis or thromboembolism. If the amount of heparin administered is not enough to inhibit the body's clotting system, blood clots may form in blood vessels throughout the body. If there is too much heparin, excessive, even life-threatening, bleeding can occur as a side effect. How to use this test? The ACT is a rapid test that can be performed at the patient's bedside prior to surgery or other medical procedures. It can also be done in or near the surgical room at intervals during and immediately after surgery. This type of testing is known as point of care testing. In the next video, I'll show one of the models of the ACT devices as it requires only plug and can be connected in, uh, in any of the room and is very mobile. ACT testing allows measurement of relatively rapid changes in heparin infusion helping to achieve and maintain a constant level of anticoagulation throughout the surgical or medical procedure. Collect blood 2 to 3 ml for filling the test. The ACT measures the inhibiting effect that heparin has on the body's clotting system, not the actual level of heparin in the blood. So it doesn't uh, measure any of the heparin level, just the effect of heparin and the seconds that passing for formation of clot. The sensitivity of the ACT test to heparin depends on the method used. And some ACT tests are designed to monitor lower levels of heparin while others are best at monitoring high levels of heparin. Meaning of the tests. The ACT or activated clotting time is measured in seconds. So this device This device uh, measuring the clotting. So you are filling this area with blood and there is detection of clotting formation. The longer the time to clot, the higher the degree of clotting inhibition anticoagulation administered. During surgery, the ACT is kept above a lower limit, uh, lower time limit. A limit at which most people will not form clots. That's the point to not forming any of the clot during the procedure and especially uh, endovascular procedures. It is important to evaluate how the person is responding to this ACT lower limit and to the amount of heparin that person is being given. The amount of heparin needed to reach and maintain a certain ACT, for instance, 300 seconds will vary as will the body's clotting potential at that ACT. If there are clotting or bleeding problems, the dosage of ACT may need to be adjusted accordingly. After surgery, the ACT may be maintained within a narrow way range, for instance, 175 to 225 seconds until the person has stabilized. So you can uh, get many samples of the, of the blood and make a measurement again and again to see what is the ACT of the patient, actual one. Where ACT is done, so ACT is test is rarely performed or done in the central laboratory. It is a point of care test that must be performed immediately after the blood is collected. Close to the patient, usually, usually at the bedside, in the operating room or in a satellite laboratory close to these locations. The ACT result is needed quickly to guide treatment.
so you should uh, you should get a sample and during 60 seconds or one minute to make evaluation or to, to make a test of ACT. How about lupus anticoagulant interference with ACT? In some patients, the presence of uh, lupus anticoagulant has been shown to prolong the ACT. But in other ca cases, the ACT may be relatively unaffected. Nevertheless, the presence of lupus anticoagulant uh, has been shown to interfere with certain ACT testing. Therefore, it is important for the laboratory to follow the manufacturer's instructions and determine if the, if the test is suitable to monitor heparin therapy in a person with documented history of lupus anticoagulant or antiphospholipid syndrome. What should I know more about this test? The ACT may be influenced by a person's platelet count and uh, function, of course. Platelets that are activated during surgery often become dysfunctional and both surgery and heparin can sometimes cause platelet number to decrease. It is called thrombocytopenia. The temperature of the blood may also affect ACT results. The blood tends to cool during surgery as it is mechanically filtered and oxygenated. Acquired and inherited conditions such as coagulation factor deficiencies and in patients receiving oral anticoagulants or with liver disease may also affect ACT results. Oral anticoagulants like warfarin and liver disease like cirrhosis. With high doses of heparin and in individuals with a prolonged proto uh, partial, pro uh, partial thromboplastin time prior to heparin anticoagulation, for example lupus anticoagulants, the partial thromboplastin time cannot be used to monitor heparin therapy. In such situations, the ACT and heparin anti-factor uh, 10A tests are used instead of partial thromboplastin time respectively. And direct thrombin inhibitors like ergotroban will prolong also the ACT. So you should know if a patient is taking any of the um, coagulation pro or anticoagulation uh, medicine and to taking count this for making ACT because uh, any of the changes or any of the treatment can influence, influence the ACT number especially uh, it is important during the surgery thank you very much and have a great time guys